Good morning and welcome to Little Flower. Today is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. All songs and readings can be found in your worship aid. And our opening song this morning is The Church is One Foundation, and we will sing verses 1 and 2. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as you all know, we had to break our first communion class into five groups. So today we have the third of the five groups. Our first communicants today are Kenzie Kramer, Brita McGinley, Lainey Richardson and Sophie Watley. So uh, we want to congratulate them to congratulate their families. And so of course I want to begin by welcoming all of you, especially their families and friends, to this liturgy. We want to welcome all of those who are watching us live stream or those who will watch us later in the day recorded. So let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, why are we dressed up today? Why are, why are you so dressed up? It's their first communion. And why is first communion an important day? The body of Christ. You're going to receive for the very first time the body of Christ. And that's an important thing. Now, when we, what's the date today? Does anybody know? August 23rd, okay. And why do you think I asked you what date it is? The what? Because it's a special day. And I hope that for the rest of your lives, you will remember this day. I made my first communion, let me think how many years ago. Um, 64 years ago, and it was May 6, 1956. So you see, I still remember. And the reason I remember is because it was an important day in my life. And so I'm hoping that for you, today is as important for you as my first communion was for me. So today is August 23rd, 2020, your first communion. 
Now, what are we receiving in, in First Communion? What, are, what? The body of Jesus. Is it really the body of Jesus or just a sign? Rita? It's what? Which one? It is, is it really or a sign? I, I, I can't hear you. Tell me again. Yes. <laughs> yes, which? Is it really the body of Christ? Yes. Very good. So we're really receiving the body of Christ. You know, a lot of people might see it only as a sign. But for us as Catholics, our faith tells us that it really is the body of Christ. We also speak about the communion as Eucharist. Does anybody know what the word Eucharist means? That's a big word. Well, not exactly. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. So today we come together, when we celebrate Eucharist, we're giving thanks to God for all of God's gifts to us, but especially for the gift of Jesus, who makes all love possible. We also use the word communion. Does anybody know what the word communion itself means? Brita? Union with God and others. Very good. I would almost think somebody coached you. <laughs> yes. Communion means union with God and others. When we receive the Eucharist each and every week, what, what are we receiving? We're receiving the body of Christ, but by receiving the body of Christ, it deepens our union with God and our unity with one another. In our gospel today, we hear Jesus ask his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they immediately answer. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But then Jesus asks them the key question. But who do you say that I am? In other words, Jesus is saying, who am I for you? And this little passage tells us something about our faith journey, your faith journey. When you were very little, you were baptized. You became members of the family of God. You became uh, sons and daughters of God. And you started out on a journey of developing faith. Some people would say there are four levels of faith journey. When you were very little, even you know, when, before you went to school, and even to some extent now, your faith is the faith of your family. In other words, just like the disciples, some say this, some say that. You're, a lot of what you're saying is because of, this is what your family says. And then of course you started in school or religious education, and then you started learning from other people about Jesus. And so now your faith is moving on a bit to the second stage, which is the, the faith of the community. And then at some point in life, as you get older, you're going to start asking your own questions. We call that questioning faith. But hopefully, at the end of the journey, or at least at a major stage of the journey, you're going to make your faith your own. Where you're going to be able to answer the way Peter answered. You know, uh, Peter answered in the name of all of them, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But that's going to be your personal faith. Not based on what your parents said, not based on what your teacher said, not based on anything, but you having come to faith on your own for your own journey. And that's an exciting journey. Because one of the things that Jesus wants from all of us is to have a very personal relationship with him. A relationship where we know him intimately. Not only as the Son of God or the Christ, but as our own, if you will, brother and friend. That we're able to talk to him as we talk to a brother or a friend. And of course, we'll still be receiving him in the Eucharist on every Sunday. This passage is important for another reason, and that is because Jesus says to Peter, you are Peter, 
and upon this rock I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Does anybody know what the word Peter actually means by chance? See, they couldn't tell you that. <laughs> Peter, it means rock. So here's what Jesus was saying to Peter. He, when he, cha he changed his name from Simon to Peter. And he said, okay, you are rock. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, your church is always going to be here for you. No matter what goes on in life, your church is here because it's been built on solid rock. So when everything else is changing, when a lot of things, we don't know what's going on and we're insecure, we're searching, we, you know, just like this virus. But we know that Jesus built his church on rock and therefore this church, this community, this family will always be here for you. When you were little, what was the first sacrament you received? Baptism. Okay. And at that time, because you were just babies, most of you, your parents rejected sin and professed faith in your name. Because you're going to be receiving your First Communion today, we're going to be asking you and everyone here to renew their baptismal promises. Let, please stand. And the response to the questions will be I do. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and again, first communicants be nice and loud here, you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray for the willingness to make present in our world the love of Christ shown to us through the Eucharist. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may God's grace help us to affirm the dignity of every person, especially the unborn, the elderly, the refugee, and the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our public officials, that the spirit of wisdom may help them strive to work for equal education, suitable housing, and equal employment opportunities for all, we pray. For your own prayer. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who serve the common good during this difficult and uncertain time, that they may be filled with wisdom, patience, and understanding, we pray. For your own prayer that in times of illness and turmoil, our merciful and loving Father will strengthen our faith and trust in his goodness and divine providence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety, shelter, nutrition, good health, and the compassionate help of others, for all in the path of the storms threatening the Gulf Coast and in the wildflowers in California, and for strength and courage for first responders and all those called to help them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kinsey Kramer, Brenda McKinley, Lainey Richardson, 
and Sophie Watley receiving their first communion this morning. May they always stay close to Christ and the church through his Holy Eucharist, and may they join us each week at the Eucharistic table. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially the victims of COVID-19 worldwide, and Francis Dugan, for whom this Mass is offered, may they find everlasting peace in God's heavenly home. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you living among us in the sacrament of your body and blood. May we offer to our Father in heaven a solemn pledge of undivided love. May we offer to our brothers and sisters a life poured out in loving service of that kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless us Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray. My sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold, best manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace.
communion today, our four first communicants will receive communion first with their parents. So they'll come up before anyone else, and they'll go back by the side. And then, uh, when everyone else comes forward, you come down the center aisles, and uh, when you come up, hold out your hand to receive communion. Please leave your masks in place until you step aside, and then put the host in your mouth and then return by the side aisle. There's hand sanitizer as you come up, one afterwards if you wish to hand sanitize after you receive. For those who are not Catholic, if you wish to come forward and receive a blessing, just cross your arms. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be given.
blessed palms from this past Palm Sunday are available for pickup at the church doors today. If you know of a neighbor or friend who is not able to attend Mass right now, please take some palms to them. Ready for your fall projects? The Little Flower PTO is selling trash bags. Proceeds from sales pay for field trips, class experiences, teach enrichment, scholarships, and more. Forms can be found in the Teresian this weekend and on the parish and school websites. Trash bags are $12 per roll and made in Indiana from Indiana Recyclables. Forms, along with payment, are due at the school or parish center by Thursday, September 10th, or in the collection basket by September 6th. Thank you for supporting our students and teachers. You probably noticed that we did not pick up a collection at the usual time. During the pandemic, there are baskets at the doors of church for your offerings. If you have a worship aid, please take it with you as you leave church. Do not leave it in the pews. There are recycling uh, baskets at the doors of each of the churches. The Archdiocese has asked that we not socialize in church after Masses. And therefore, we ask that everyone who is not taking pictures to please leave church at the end of Mass. And we ask that those who are taking pictures to remove your belongings from the pews so that the volunteer cleaners can begin cleaning. We want to, once again, we want to congratulate our, second, our first communicant. We also want to thank those who have helped prepare them for First Communion um, and who are with us today. First of all, Lisa Gibbons is the Director of Sacramental Preparation for the Parish. Um, Joanne Majors has been the teacher of our religious education students this year. Lucy Boltman is, uh, was their second grade teacher last year, as well as Jennifer Purcell. And I think it's right, Mrs. Purcell has done a wonderful thing for coming here. You know, she no longer teaches at Little Flower, she's teaching in her home parish at St. Francis and Clare, but yet she cared enough to come back to celebrate with you. So let's give them a hand too. <laughs> and again, thank you all for being here. Let us pray and thanks giving. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of our second grade traditions is to make blessing cups. So they decorated these cups before the pandemic hit. So we're now asking them to come up and surround them as we bless them. Just stand next to each other. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing upon these cups and in a special way upon these children. Good and gracious God, bless these first communicants and their blessing cups, which we bless in your name and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. May these blessing cups always remind them of their first communion and to be grateful for the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist. May their faith in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist grow deeper with each passing year. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.